welcome to the Embrace Sports Bra Sew Along. I am so glad that you're here and that you've decided to join me this week. Um, we have our sponsors. Green Style is the designer of the pattern and the Fabric Fairy has also um, graciously offered a prize to one of our participants if you're sewing this week with me. Um, otherwise, these videos, will stay, these videos will stay up so you can come back and watch them at any time if you need help on any of the steps. Also, don't hesitate to ask me if you have any questions So let's get started. The first thing I want to talk to you about is your size and how to pick the size that you need to sew. So on this pattern, it's a little different if you've sewn other sports bra patterns. Sometimes you'll um, sew a size like 32C or 36, you know, you'll have a cup size and a band size. So this one is a little bit different. It goes off of your full bust measurement. So um, I have a measuring tape. So you're going to want to measure the fullest part of your bust and that will be the letter size that you pick. So you're going to want to go, uh, you want your tape measure, you'll do this without a shirt on. It's easier if you do it with like a really well supporting um, sports bra. The, the main goal is you don't want like a padded bra that's going to make your numbers different. Um, than otherwise they would be. So just make sure it's not a bra with a lot of padding, just like a sports bra. And then you'll get the fullest area around your bust. And then you'll take that number and then you'll also do the exact same thing on your underbust. So when you take your underbust, you don't wanna, you don't wanna breathe in really big because that's gonna give you an inch or two, you know, just your lung capacity. So you just wanna stand normal with your air not puffed up and then get all the way underneath your bust where your band would go. Um, then take those two numbers and subtract them. So let's, for example, I'll, I'll give you mine. I am about 32 and a half around my full bust and 28 on my under bust. So that gives me a four and a half inch difference between those two. So on the chart, it says if you have less than four inches as your difference, you do not need a dart. So you're just going to do the no dart option. If it's four inches to seven inches, then you're going to want to have the darted version. So when you go to print your pattern, you'll want to print out the pattern pieces that have a dart. Okay. If it's greater than seven inches, like seven to 10 inches, then you will want to do the FBA option. So that would be a full bust adjustment that's drafted already into the piece. But Let's say you're greater than 10 inches, you're gonna wanna perform a further full bust adjustment onto the pattern, okay? So you pick the letter based on just your full bust. That's the only number that you need to pick. So based on mine, mine was 32 and a half, I pick a C. If yours is 39, then you would pick an F. See, I printed off the size chart. So you just, that's the first thing, and that's the size that you're printing. Whenever you go to select layers and figure out what to print, base it on that and just trust the sizing. You don't need to worry about what your normal bra would be. This is drafted for these measurements. So just trust whatever these are and don't get caught up if you are used to purchasing a different bra, then um, the sizing is maybe telling you because this isn't a traditional um, like ready to wear store-bought bra sizing. This is a sewing, this is a sewing sizing. So um, I hope that makes sense. Um, so anyway, so print your letter and it goes from 30 inches, that would be a size B, all the way up to a full bust that is 61 inches. Um, and just pick your letter based on that and then whatever version that you're printing, either the dart, the no dart or the full bust adjustment, you're gonna print those pieces based on the differential between your under bust and your full bust. You don't need to take your over bust, it's not necessary in this pattern. Um, okay, now that we've talked about that, Let's get into talking about what supplies. So supplies, you will need um, just athletic fabric for your main. You can also use it for your lining. That's what I do. I don't get a different fabric. You wanna make sure it has some really nice stretch to it um, and good recovery. Um, this is one of the fabrics I use for one of my bra. It's a yoga fabric. There's lots of different athletic fabrics that work, but look for one that has at least 8% spandex. If it has less than that in spandex, you're really going to not have the support that you need. The firmer the recovery is, the more compressive the fabric is, the more firm and um, compressive it's going to be for you. And the more, the less movement you'll have, like when you're jogging or um, moving around. Um, another option is to get power mesh or power net, whichever 
uh, they're labeled differently, but you want the one that has the firm, firm hold. Um, and that is a great option for putting, actually sandwiching between your main and your lining. If you're gonna do a power net, sometimes they're not soft enough to put next to your skin. If they are soft enough, if you feel it and you're like, this would feel great next to my skin, then sure, you can use it as your lining. If it's not, baste it to the wrong side of your lining and just treat them as one piece. Um, the lining, that's another question. You can use um, swim, like swim lining, um, or I just, I don't, I like just having like a really soft athletic fabric. I'll use like a brush fabric or something that I really like the way it feels next to my skin. Um, another thing that you're gonna probably need are cups. I think that cups really help a sports bra give you definition and, and look better. Um, I've ordered some on Amazon. These are like a smaller size. I got these one time on Etsy and I they were listed as like my cup size and obviously they're not. Um, but cup size, it's interesting when you're buying sewing cups in that if you're a C cup, like a 28 C, your C is very different than let's say a 40 C. They're, the fullness of the breast is much different. So it's interesting when you go to buy sewing cups and it says C cup and you think, well, I'm a 28 C that'll fit me or I'm a 40 C that'll fit me, I'm a C cup. Well, not really because you're very different. I've read and I've tried to confirm this because I have not been able to figure out where I even learned this or saw this. Is a lot of times when a sewing cup is listed, it's based off of a 34 band size. So if you're a 28 C and you go buy a C cup, that's not, it's not gonna fit you because um, it would be fitting for the fullness of a 34 C. So you would need to go down to like an A or a B um, in the sewing cup size. And I've learned that the hard way because I have ordered cups online and I'm like, this is not gonna work. Um, so the same thing goes, think if you're a 40 C and you go online and you order a C cup, it's probably gonna be too small for you. So you'll need to go up, I would say, um, to a double D or an E um, on cup size if, you have, if you're that far off from a 40. You can use sister sizing to determine that. Um, that is one way. Another thing that you can do is just to measure. Most listings will, um, they measure the bottom of this, which doesn't really tell you the depth, um, but most listings will measure, measure the bottom. And that'll give you an idea um, if you measure here, it'll give you some of an idea of which way you need to go in buying cups. Okay, cups, I hope that helps some. Okay, now let's talk about elastic. So you're gonna need some elastic in your underbust as well as you're gonna need elastic in your seams that go um, in the bra, just to make them straight. The elastic that you're gonna need in your seams is clear elastic. I like to just buy a roll of it on Amazon and it lasts me through many, many bras. You can buy it at Joann's. There's lots of different places that sell it. If you're looking for clear elastic that's about a quarter of an inch and um, the three eighths inch might be a little bulky, but if that's all you can find, then that will work just as well. Um, I just prefer the quarter of an inch. Okay, the underbust band, you either want one and a half inch elastic or two inch elastic, just depending on how wide you want that band, um, how much support you need from that band. Um, another option is soft waistband elastic. This is um, this plush soft stuff that you don't have to um, put in a casing when you put on. You can just put it directly underneath your bra. I like to use that if I can find a color that that meshes well. It's really soft on your skin. You can also use them in waistbands of like boxers and um, underwear and stuff like that. Okay, I think we've covered all of our supplies. You will need a stretch needle. You will need coordinating thread. Okay, another supply that you might need is a bra hook enclosure. Um, they come in all different sizes and widths and whatever. I like to find the ones that actually list the width because um, this is, you need to know the measurement from here to here. Because if you are using underbust elastic that is one and a half inches, then you need a one and a half inch tall um, bra clip. But if you're using the two inch elastic, then you'll want a two inch tall bra clip. So um, be mindful of that. This is definitely not necessary. Um, think about it more if you have a really hard time getting your sports bra over your shoulders, then it's nice to have that clip because then it loosens the underbust elastic so that it's easier to get over your shoulders and then just to clip it yourself. Um, that's enough. another nice supply to have. Definitely not necessary if you can't get any um, in time for the sew along, but something to think about if you have a, a difficult time getting your bra on and off. Okay, one thing that I want to talk about is um, 
we, whether you need a serger, a sewing machine, a cover stitch, what kind of machines that you need. And I just want you to know, as long as you have a standard sewing machine, you can follow through this entire pattern and do everything on your sewing machine. Um, it's nice to have a serger. It's nice to have a cover stitch, but they're definitely not necessary for this pattern. Um, if I'm going to be using throughout the video, I'll be using my serger to construct a lot of the seams. That's just because it's quick. I have it set for a stretch stitch, but you can use a sewing machine for those exact same steps. You'll just want to either use a zigzag or a stretch stitch, whatever your machine has that you're comfortable with. Test it out on some scraps, get some scraps and so just like a regular seam on them and just see how that seam holds up and make sure that that seam will stretch. Um, whenever I apply my clear elastic in the seams, I try and not start exactly on the edge because I don't really want a bulkier seam allowance. I start about three eighths inch away and um, I apply that clear elastic on my sewing machine. You can apply it at the same time. I just like to do it in two steps and then zigzag it on with my sewing machine. Um, so you'll see that in the video when I apply that. So oh, now let's get to talking about all the options that this bra has to offer. Um, and then we'll also look at the pattern pieces so I can show you exactly what you should be printing. Um, the options of the bra, you have two different front options. On the front, you can do just a solid to where it's just one fabric that you're using, or you can have a color block that goes nicely um, to, to use different two different fabrics. It has a little a seam right across your bust. Um, the other option that you have is on the back. On the back, you have three different backs that you can choose from. You can do a U back, you can do a racer back, or you can just layer both the U and the, ra the racer back. If you're doing the U and the racer together, you make sure you're printing the right pieces for that. The pieces you need will say layered back on them. Um, another thing to think about on the back, you can do a keyhole back, um, or you can do a non keyhole back. The keyhole, it just gives you a little cutout at the back. Um, and let's see, and then you can do the bra hook. You can also put a hook on the back if you want. The bra is bound, the neckline of the bra is bound. Um, if you don't like the binding, then you'll need to use a completely different method of construction. Um, if you've made a power sports bra, you could use that method of construction, um, which is where you sew your main and your lining separate, and then you sew them together um, at the arm side and at the neckline. You can use that method, um, but you wouldn't wanna follow this tutorial if you did that. Um, this the re Okay, let me tell you why I like the way that the embrace bra is sewn. The embrace bra is sewn so that when you try it on, it is fully done except for just that neckline lining. So you can adjust your straps. So it really helps to get a perfect fit. On, on other bras, I feel like that I've tried, when you go to try on, adjusting straps is not that easy. Like even in the power sports bra, I feel like I'm, you know, having to figure it out from my back and then feed those through and take the bra off. And, and it's a lot different of a process. The way that this one is sewn, those straps, it's one of your last steps and you have your underbust elastic already in. So you really get a good picture of how long or short your straps need to be. So that is an important process that we will do one of these, um, on one of the days of the video on the final day. Um, so that is one thing to think about. Um, let's see, let's get into the pattern pieces. I'm ready to show you um, this. So on the pattern pieces, let's start with the front. So this is the front liner on with the dart, the darted option. Um, I just like will cut through one part of the dart and I can kind of hinge it open and closed um, as I cut and then I'll mark the dart this way. Um, if you're doing the one with no dart or the FBA, then you won't need that. So just make sure that you cut out the one that goes with, um, with yours. So this is the lining piece. If you're doing a solid front, then your lining and your main is the same pattern piece. If you're wanting to do um, the front that has the color blocking, then you'll need these two pieces that you'll put them together to make the same as that lining. So you'll wanna cut. Notice that this is where the fold line is on this piece and then this is where the fold line is on this piece so just make sure that you have cut on this one you'll cut one piece one piece one piece if you're doing the color block if you're doing just the solid front then you're only cutting two of these okay put those to the side now let's talk about the racer back if you're doing a racer back version of this bra there you're gonna see that there are two racer back pieces one of them is if you're doing only the racer back. The other one is if you're doing the layered racer back. Notice that you can cut out the keyhole or not. It's up to you whether you want that cut out. 
And also you will have a binding piece to go along with um, if you do that. You only need the binding if you're doing the single racer back. If you're doing the layered racer back, you do not need to cut out a binding for that keyhole. It will be finished along with the U-back. Okay, so the difference in these pieces, they should be the exact same. The only difference is, well, they're not exactly the same. This is a little, um, this has the seam right here, different. And then let's see, it's right here that's mainly different, the racer bag. Because you see, you, it's just reducing bulk. If you're doing the U-back, then you just need this piece for your U-back. And you can do um, with or without the keyhole. If you do the keyhole, then you'll make sure you want to cut out your binding. And um, also, you will have two different cut lines on the back. If you're doing a layered back, then you're doing the first line right here. If you're doing a single U-back, then you'll want to remove this. This this cut line, this deeper cut line, is only if you're doing the solid U-back and not combining it with a racer back. Okay, then the last piece I want to show you you'll need is the band. And this is only necessary if you're encasing elastic. If you're using um, the soft plush waistband elastic, you'll not need to cut this piece. This piece has two different cut lines. I have mine cut out on the one and a half inch elastic cut line, but make sure if you have two inch elastic that you cut on the appropriate cut line for that. Also, if you decide to do the keyhole, make sure that you just make a, a mark. Um, I just mark at the edge of my fabric right underneath this keyhole um, so that I know um, where to sew that. And we'll show you that on the day that we do our band. Okay, that's everything. We are ready to sew. Today's goals that I want you to get through, I want you to at least cut, figure out your size, cut out all of your pieces. And um, once everything is cut out, um, you have all your supplies, you're cut out, then you are ready and finished for today. And tomorrow we will get into actually sewing the bra.